You ever thought about how cool it would be to build your own turbo setup? Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over all the components you need to build one of these. We'll go over some of the costs. Yeah. This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by Northern Tool and Equipment. Northern Tool and Equipment is family owned with over 120 stores nationwide. It's a great place to gear up providing service for hardworking pros and serious DIYers. Northern Tool and Equipment also provides expert parts and service plus a repair team in all stores who can get your equipment tuned up and running right. Visit northerntool.com for a store near you or just shop online. What's up guys, welcome to Fab Forms. We're gonna go over some of this turbo setup stuff. I've had a lot of questions about uh, folks wanting to build their own setup, don't really know where to start. They wanna do the wrong thing. And so I'm gonna go over how easy it is to build one of these. And you know, you can get carried away if you want, but you don't necessarily have to. We'll go over the basics of a turbo. We'll talk about the wastegates, blow off, what they do, and how the whole system works together. Got a light out, so bust out the old trusty scaffold. Scaffolding is one of those tools that uh, I never really thought would be as necessary as it, as it is in a shop like this. But I mean, when I built this thing, I painted all the ceiling in here with scaffolding, hung all the lights, did electrical, and it's super useful to have in a shop like this when, well, when you need to change the light out. They're easy to put together. It just comes with two sides, some cross braces. You got some walk boards. And uh, I usually like to stagger these where I can kind of get my way up there. But yeah, it is um, definitely something useful to have. I bought these years ago and I actually have like three different sections so I can go as high as I want. I get buddies of mine all the time asking to borrow them. As you know, I got a lot of stuff from Northern Tool Equipment here. All the air system is from Northern Tool my bead blaster, and uh, you can get these at Northern Tool as well. And surprisingly, you can get uh, one of these setups for as much as an expensive ladder would cost you. Anyway, so this brand is Metal Tech. They're super handy to have. If, uh, yeah, if you wanna do stuff the safe way, you don't wanna be on a ladder up there. Trust me, I've tried it. It doesn't, doesn't work out too well. Get you some scaffold stuff. You can put it together yourself. You can take it down yourself. Kind of stack it away in the corner or outside when you're not using it. And then when you need it, you got it. Northerntool.com, you can go check these out. Metal Tech, scaffold, I like the, uh, I like the wheel options too. You can kind of roll this thing around. And if you want to, you just lock her down. She won't go nowhere. They've also got these legs that come off the side. If you're gonna go higher than three or higher than two, I think they suggest you put these um, support legs on. They just snap on. You can kind of hang these things out to the side. Make sure you ain't tipping her over. Anyway. Enough about Northern Tool and equipment and the scaffolding. Let's talk about turbo setups. So for those that have been watching this build for a long time, I'm getting close. I know I keep saying that every time, but I think all the electrical's done now. So I got everything done. At least all the electrical's done to fire this thing up. Uh, got a couple little wires I need to wire some switches on. And uh, my run fuel system. And then hopefully I'll be starting this thing up pretty soon. I know it's taking forever and I, I apologize, but man, it's just a tedious job. But I think I've finally got it whooped. So turbo setups, man, everybody wants a turbo, right? Or twin turbos. That's like the cool thing to do, twin turbos. So there's 
really three main components of a turbo setup. Actually, there's more than that. But to break it down super easy. Turbo setups from the outside kind of look pretty daunting, but they're actually really, really simple. And what I want to do is I don't want to get into like great detail as far as how to build one of these when you when it talk when you, you know you hear people talking about you know back purging, stainless, hot side, and you know doing this and doing that. I don't want to I don't want to get into all that because technically you don't need to do that. You can you know you can get some aluminized pipe and, and kind of MIG weld some stuff together and have a turbo setup. Matter of fact, uh, back in the day I used to be pretty fond of forums. There was a forum called the Turbo Forums. And man, there was people building turbo setups from super nice stainless this and TIG welded and V-band and all this stuff. And then there was people building turbo setups that worked very well on a budget. And basically they just built them out of whatever they had laying around. So I don't want to scare anybody away by saying you have to do it a certain way. I say go build one and then uh, kind of get your feet wet, build it with whatever you got on a budget, get your feet wet. And then, you know, when stuff starts breaking, if it does or whatever, you kind of already know how to do it. You can kind of rebuild it or redo some stuff as time goes on. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get into the mechanics and the, basically the different parts of a turbo setup. To start off, let's talk about the turbo itself. So the turbo is made up of three basic parts. You have the uh, compressor side. So this is the air that actually goes in the motor. Just comes in this inlet through here and in the motor. You have the main housing of the turbo. This is where all the bearings and shafts and the oil system goes through. Some turbos have water cooling that would actually go through there as well. And then you have the hot side of the turbo. This is where the exhaust gases come through. So the exhaust gases come off the headers, down and around through this turbine, and then it expels your exhaust out this side. I've heard people talk about the fact that they thought the exhaust went back in the motor and that's not how it works. It's two totally separate systems. So think of a supercharger, like a centrifugal supercharger, say a pro charger or a vortex supercharger. It has a compressor wheel like this, but on this side, it's spun by a belt. And that's really all a centrifugal supercharger is. There's a gear drive in there in order to spin this thing fast enough, but technically that's all it is. It's belt driven, turns the uh, compressor wheel, compresses the air, pushes it in the motor, and that's how it makes power. Turbo works the same way. There's no belt though. You use exhaust gases to basically spin that and uh, it does the work. Kind of free horsepower. So on a centrifugal supercharger setup, it takes horsepower to spin that thing. Um, on a turbo setup, you're not necessarily using crank horsepower to do it. You're using exhaust gases. Now, there is some loss in that just because the motor has to push it out. But um, it's, in a very, it's a very efficient setup. And with the way technology is nowadays, they've got these things figured out really, really well. So recap, exhaust gases come out of the header, down through here, up through the exhaust turbine housing, and there's a wheel in there. And it basically spins that wheel and then the exhaust gases are let out through the mufflers or however, whatever exhaust you have. And then this, uh, turbine wheel is connected through a shaft to the compressor wheel. So this compressor wheel is spinning at the same speed. It is pulling in air, compressing that air and pushing it in the motor, making more horsepower, which makes more exhaust gases, which spins the turbo faster, which compresses more air, makes more horsepower, which makes more exhaust. And it's kind of a runaway train type of setup. It's actually pretty magical when you think about it. So those are that's the basic function of a way a turbo works. If you have twin turbos, it's kind of the same concept. You usually got one bank running one turbo and then you have the other bank running the other turbo. At some point, you kind of bring the inlet air together and it pushes it in the motor. Same 
style deal. Usually on a twin turbo setup, you need, you know, you don't need as big of a turbo as you would on a single. You run two smaller ones. They tend to spool a little faster. Um, so yeah. Now, where do we go from here? Let's talk about blow off. So I've heard a lot of people talk about the blow off valve is what controls the boost and that is not how this works. Um, in some of your supercharger applications, some guys use a blow off valve to control the boost a little bit, maybe in the drag racing world to kind of leave the mat bleed off a little bit of this um, so they can control it. But that's not the primary function of a blow off valve. A blow off valve is to release the pressure that's in this tube when the throttle body shuts. So for instance, you know, this thing's wide open throttle. There's all kinds of air moving through here. And then you let off the gas, the throttle shuts. Well, there's all kinds of pressure in here and this turbo is still kind of trying to push it in there. And it can do a couple of things. It'll either backspin the turbo, which is not good for it, um, or just create some kind of damage. And that's what this is for. So if you, if you look right here, it's got a basically a vacuum line that ties in to the intake and it's going to be on the intake side of the throttle body, which is where this goes. So the throttle body is right in here. So you can tie it in here. It can be tied into the actual plenum itself. It can be tied in anywhere. But the second that this thing senses vacuum, so when you shut the throttle blade, this side of the intake is going to uh, sense vacuum. It's going to create vacuum in there. That vacuum is going to travel through this. It's going to pull a diaphragm and open this valve, which bleeds off all this extra pressure. So does that make sense? Blow off, it just blows off the air, right? It basically releases that pressure. And typically there's two sounds you're gonna hear on a turbo setup that everybody uh, associates turbos with. That's the, the psh when somebody lets off. That's typically the blow off valve that you hear. Uh, there's another sound that you'll hear where it's um, surging the compressor, you hear that, that you hear one spool and then you hear it do like this. That's actually it surging the compressor, which is not really good for them. Um, it's trying to backspin that compressor uh, wheel and that's the noise that you kind of hear coming out of there. And sometimes you'll hear a little bit of both. If you don't have enough blow off or don't have a blow off at all, it's gonna make that, that surging sound. If you have enough blow off, typically you won't hear as much surge or maybe like one quick surge and that's it. And there's different reasons for different kinds of setups. You know, a lot of your stick guys don't want as much blow off. They kind of want that compressor uh, wheel to never unload. And that way when they get in the next gear, you know, they rock and roll. So that takes care of blow off. Hope that makes sense. Let's get into wastegates. So the wastegate is is how you control boost on a turbo setup. And so if you think about like on a, on a supercharger setup, the belt itself, if you could control slippage on that belt, you could control boost. So when you make you know as much boost as you wanted to on a supercharger setup, if you could say, hey, I wanna start slipping the belt at 10 pounds, it's not gonna continue to spin that supercharger anymore. It's gonna keep 10 pounds on there and then if you wanted to dial it up a little bit, you can. And that's basically what a wastegate does. So the wastegate basically blows off exhaust gases. So as the exhaust gases are coming through this housing and spooling this turbo up, um, there's a spring in here, it has a diaphragm very similar to the blow off. And once this senses pressure, uh, uh, you know, and these springs are calibrated to a certain amount of pressure. So if you have a 10 pound spring in here, when it's making 10 pounds of boost, it's gonna then push that valve open. So there's a diaphragm, it's gonna push that valve open and it's gonna start releasing exhaust gases out of here versus letting them go through the turbo. And that's how you're gonna maintain that level of boost. You can change the springs. Um, if you want more boost, you put you know heavier springs in there, it's basically gonna um, take more pressure to open those valves and bleed off that exhaust gas. Now, you see a lot of guys that are controlling boost, you know, with the laptop. And the way they do that is through a couple different ways. Um, they can either 
bleed off pressure out of these lines. So you'd put like, say a, a little valve in here and then that valve will bleed off pressure, which makes, which is basically fooling these because it's not sensing the pressure that the turbos are making. And the more you bleed off, the more boost you can make theoretically to a certain point. Um, some guys will actually push pressure on the top side of these. So you can actually push pressure on this, which is gonna hold that valve shut longer. And so there's a couple ways to do it, but basically that's how they do it. They're just manipulating that air. They're either faking it out by bleeding off some of that, that boost pressure, or they're pushing air on top of it, which is kind of fighting that boost pressure and not allowing those valves to open up. And then that's how you ramp it in too, so they can ramp boost in and out based on those pressures. Hope that makes sense without getting into great detail. That's basically what this thing does though. It just bleeds off exhaust gases. So like on this setup, I've got one wastegate for each side. You could tip, you know, you could put one big wastegate on there. If you had both of these tubes going together into one, you could just have one big wastegate that bleeds off the pressure from both sides. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So as far as building a setup like this, um, it can be done pretty simply. Like this is just a stock Ford uh, shorty header that's turned around backwards and then I just basically welded some tubing together to, to make the rest of the kit. Now one of the things you wanna do if you're building your own kit is you wanna support the turbo in some way. You don't want it sitting on, those, on that exhaust tubing. It tends to crack if you do that. Uh, the way that I've kind of combated that is I made this frame that comes down on both sides and it basically ties into a plate that the turbo mounts to. So the turbo is sitting on this frame, not on the exhaust tubes. And then the exhaust tubes come underneath and it all sandwiches together. One of the things that you'll probably want to do too is you want to put some kind of flex bellow in here. They make um, stainless bellows you can put in there. It really helps with cracking. It doesn't stress the stuff as much. And it also helps with aligning everything when you're putting it together. When you weld this stuff up, it tends to want to move a little bit and then stuff is not exactly aligned and it'll kind of fight you. Whereas if you have those little flex joints in there, it makes things easier to kind of put it back together. And it also saves the tubing. When that stuff heats up and wants to move, it gives it that little bit of movement that it needs so it's not cracking and, and that sort of thing. I didn't put any on this setup. I may do it in the future if I have trouble, but uh, just for ease of space, I didn't put any on. Now, the one thing on this turbo setup that you see that I'm missing is an intercooler. So these things create a lot of heat. First of all, when you compress air, it makes the air hot. And then you also have the exhaust gases that are running right next to it and it basically will transfer that heat through the shaft, through the housing, into this housing. It heat soaks it all, and so that makes the air that much hotter. For, for this particular setup, I wasn't as concerned about it. I don't plan on making a ton of boost, for one. The other thing is it's all open air, too, so it's going to have its own cooling effect, right? It's not under a hood, packed in an engine bay. Uh, and then I figured if I needed to, I'd spray it with a little alcohol. I may actually run E85 on this. Will help. That'll help, too. And so I wasn't terribly concerned about it. You know, if I make only five pounds on this thing, um, hopefully the air, the air intake temps won't get too high. If they do, I'll put something else on there. I just didn't want to have a big intercooler out here in the way and, and you know, taking up a bunch of space. We'll show you on the goose. So this is a twin turbo setup. Let me pop the hood off and I'll kind of show you uh, the slight differences. All right, so the Goose twin turbo setup, it's all the same stuff though. You have headers, basically come off, down through, they come up through this turbine housing and then it expels the gas off of this. And on this one, I have it run down through like a traditional exhaust out the back with mufflers. So it's the same thing on both sides. There's the waste gates. So the waste gates are just tied into the exhaust side. Got a waste gun on either side. And then like I was telling you, um, I put pressure on the top so I can control boost, so I can make as much as I want or don't want, uh, along with lines on the bottom as well. And then pulls air in here, 
spins it up, compresses it, goes down through, and on this one it wise in to one tube that then wraps around and comes up front and goes through the intercooler, which is up front. You can see the tubing over here. And then on this setup, what I did is the tubing actually comes up through the fender and goes into the cowl area and then comes out and goes in the motor. So same setup, same technology, same everything. This particular setup, it's a little more compact, a little harder to work with, but still ultra simple. The blow off on this one is in the fender on the, on the piping itself. So it has a blow off as well. Uh, you know, all the same stuff that that basically setup has except for the intercooler. And that's just to cool that air um, after it comes out of those turbos. And that's mainly because it's all closed in. I plan on making a lot more boost with this thing. And, you know, I want to drive it. So I get out and cruise and ride and, you know, the heat soak would would hurt it. Really the only reason I went through the fender and stuff too is just to make all this engine bay clean. Really I just wanted turbos up here and motor and that's it. And that's kind of what I accomplished. All right, so let's talk price. So obviously these kits can cost you as much as you want to spend. I mean, you can have several grand in just the turbo itself, depending on what you're doing. Um, you got tubing if you want to go like stainless especially if it's like a 321 stainless or something and you're making the headers yourself and you need the flanges and all that stuff, it can get pretty expensive. Or if you're buying them already made, it can get pretty expensive. But really you could build the whole setup for around a thousand bucks if you did it budget. And I'll kind of tell you or show you how that can be done. So let's just look at the setup I've got here as an example. These headers are stainless, and I think you can get that set for like 200 bucks. You can buy really cheap blow-offs on like eBay or, or Amazon. I think you can get these for like, uh, or this style for like $50. Same thing with the wastegates. You can get like knockoff wastegates um, for, you know, not much more, maybe 80, 60, 80, 80 bucks. Uh, then you got some stainless tubing, a flange. You got to get a turbo, obviously. You can get like this particular turbo. It's just a Borg Warner S400. You can get these for like $600. You know, you don't have to necessarily use V-bands. You can use couplers for everything. Um, you know, if you use like, you can even use, I've seen guys use these ball sockets on the traditional exhaust and they just basically take that little flanged piece and bolt it on and as long as you got a good seal it'll work now obviously that cost doesn't include you know the standalone ecu you're probably going to need in order to run a turbo setup uh, some of the fuel system stuff you're going to need you're going to need you know a brute boost referencing fuel pressure regulator or the old school way of doing it would be an fmu you can put an fmu on there and it basically just boosts the fuel pressure um, as, as it makes more boost versus changing the duty cycle on the injectors. And for a long time, back in the day, that's, that's how you know I did it and a lot of people did it. And it actually worked pretty well. I mean, the right way to do it, obviously, is to run a bigger injector and run more duty cycle as, as boost uh, is created. So anyway, like I said, I had a ton of questions. I mean, I've had questions for years, but had some more kind of pop up about where to get started. I hope that kind of outlines how these setups work and basically shows that um, these kits can be built pretty cheap. You know, you got just your exhaust side, a little bit of welding. You got your induction side, like I said, a little bit of welding, or you could even use just um, silicone couplers on there. Just put a little bead on there and just couple it all together. You're ready to rock and roll. You got a blow off, some wastegates, figure out your exhaust side, oiling. So you have to oil these things. Typically what you'll wanna do is you'll just find where the oil pressure sending unit is on, on the engine that you're using and then just tee it off. So on the Ford motors, they have this little piece that comes out. There's a pressure sending, uh, oil pressure sending unit that goes in the end of this. I just drilled a hole, 
tapped it, put a fitting in there, run some braided line, and then you just have to drain it back to the tank. So if you can see up in there, there's an actual drain line. So you can see that drain line, it actually comes off the bottom of the turbo and then just drains back into the side of the um, oil pan. I can see it, but it's pretty tight. And you just wanna make sure that, that drain line's um, pretty big and goes downhill as well. You wanna make sure that thing can drain. It's gonna gravity drain. And so you want it to get all that extra oil out of there back into the oil pan. All right guys, there you go. That's the basics of a turbo setup. Obviously, I didn't go into a lot of the details on, on building these things. And like I said, you can kind of wing it, put these things together. I've seen some pretty ratchet setups that work pretty well. And so if you're just wanting to do a budget setup, you know, on your truck, car, whatever it is, that's the basics. Just figure it out from there. I'll, uh, Maybe I'll drop some links in the description of some of these components that I've talked about that are on the budget side. You know, obviously you can spend as much as you want on some of the top dollar stuff. A lot of this knockoff stuff that you see uh, is knocked off from the higher end companies. They just tend to use lower quality materials. So for instance, on the wastegates, the actual valves and the seats themselves may be a lower quality. They may tend to burn up after a while. But what I found is you can actually buy the good quality valves and seats, rebuild those because they're almost an exact knockoff. Um, and then they'll, you know, last. But so anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys soon. Go do work, son.